Okay, so I will be talking a bit about this contribution project that Markus has been uh, praising so much. I really appreciate it, thank you. Um, uh, and also, uh, yeah, I would like to, to, to say that I'm surprised how many people we are here today. I remember back in December, I was the one who put out on Coplex saying, hey, we should make an event like this. And, and then things just took off. I'm, I'm surprised. And uh, so, but actually, before I would start this presentation, I would do like Clark Kent. So, the theme of this is Hagaton with the logo of Superman. So, actually, we made a few of these t shirts that all of you can get over here afterwards. <laughs> So it can all be as awesome as us for doing C1 stuff. So now I'm ready. <laughs> Ta -da. We're only missing the red cape and then we are ready to go. So the Superman theme, thank you. No. Okay, so um, how many of you have actually used anything from this project? It's good to see. Which parts? Like the master pages and, uh, yeah? Razor. And Razor, yeah, of course, Razor. Razor. Yes, Razor. Actually, I, I, yeah, I guess it is a part of the project. I don't really see it as a part of the project. I see it as a part of the core. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess you would say it is. So this project started, well, actually, we can t go to the next slide, maybe. So, a bit about me first which will explain why I maybe made a few of the things in the project. So I've been working for web for the last 14 years and uh, CMS systems for the last six years. And uh, how many of you have actually worked with, I guess you've worked with things before C1, of course. C1 is pretty new. But I have worked with uh, all these systems here. Um, so actually the old Composite 3.8. Um, uh, I worked with Umbargo, I worked with Sidecore. A system called N2. Does anyone know you know it? Yes. And of course, C1. And I'm actually certified in all these as well. <clears throat> so the thing here is, if we go next to the next slide, you see what is actually in common in all these CMS systems. And the thing is that they're all built on .NET and have the S.NET as like the underlying foundation for it. So the thing is. Why re-implement re like certain things that has to be the same on every website? When you have different CMS systems, why is it that you act always have to do it in the CMS system way? I mean, you have the Ethernet platform, and in there, I mean, you have things that you can reuse across the different CMS platforms because, of course, they're all on S.NET. Like when I started on C1, the first thing I saw was, come on, there's no master pages support. All the websites I've made before, I've made the templates in master pages because then I can reuse all the content. In Sidecore, you can make master pages. In Umbaku, you can make master pages and so on and so forth. So, uh, next slide. Yeah, so, yeah, like I said, they're all built on S.NET. Um, you have a perfect good templating system in .NET, the, the master pages, and you have uh, a lot of providers for doing basic common stuff like uh, navigation. You have uh, membership providers for doing like extra net stuff and these things. Um, and C1 didn't have any of these providers and support for templating. <clears throat> Next. Yeah, so the basic thing here is when you work with several CMS systems, it's important that you're able to reuse many of the things, as, I mean, code once and use it on all the platforms, all the CMSs, and reuse the knowledge as well. Um, uh, if I would go out and say, how do I do this XSLT in C1, uh, the chance of getting a lot of answers is a bit less than saying, how do I do this in master pages in .NET, for instance. Um, uh, so that's the basic idea about many of the things I made in Contrib. Next. So when I started 
on C1 was back in uh, January 2010. No, November 2010. This was released in January 2011, but actually many of the things I started working on even before that. And before I worked on C1, I've been working on Umbaco and Sitecore. So the basic ideas that I put into this contrib project was ideas I had even before that, saying I'm working with Sitecore, I still work with Sitecore, but I want to reuse stuff. I want to reuse my master page I have in Sitecore. I want to be able to use it in, in C1. <clears throat> so I actually, yeah, so I made master page support, I made these things, and then I put it into a contribute project because, next slide, because I wanted to show off that you are actually able to do these things. Maybe they want, <laughs> they don't want to put it in the core. Um, uh, some of the things are in the core now, which is cool. Um, uh, some of them, I don't know if they will ever be. Um, uh, but I want to show that you're actually able to do, you don't have to sit back and say, oh, fuck it, this is stupid. Let's choose something else because it's not able to do it. It is able to do it. You just have to, to tingle it with it. You have to, to know which put buttons to, to press and these things. And, uh, and before I released this, there was nothing out there. So I wanted to, to show to other people, hey, you're able to do it. Um, uh, and of course, sharing is caring. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so the first release I made was in January 2011. Um, uh, a lot of the code was way older, but like, <laughs> like Marcus was telling about before going open source with C1, that you want to maybe fix up your naming conventions, you want to fix up your comments and all these things because suddenly you have all these people looking at your code and uh, you don't want them to say, hey, that's crap code. Um, uh, so uh, a bit of time was done on that before releasing it. And uh, so what happened? <clears throat> I released master pages and uh, the sitemap provider um, and I released the nicer URL stuff. Um, uh, one, I can... <coughs> My background was, uh, like Marcus mentioned, I was working in Greenland at this time. And uh, yeah, I was working with Sidecore and Umbrago. And uh, one customer could be using one system and maybe they would change in the mid sudden of, of everything. And it was important that when a site changed from one CMS platform to the other, that the URLs wouldn't change that yeah, the templating behind it wouldn't change and all these things. So therefore I had to fix up the URLs so it looked the same from one CMS to the other. Um, uh, and yeah, and the master page of course got a lot of, of great support, thank you for that. Um, uh, and after that what happened? Well, a, a few more things were released. Um, in April there was some experimental MVC rendering just for fun. Um, uh, no one really used it. it it's broken now. Um, uh, there's been a bit talk on Coplex about MVC. I'm not an MVC guy. Um, and none of the, on the C1 core is MVC guys. We don't really get it. Um, uh, we have asked people, like, if C1 was to support MVC, how it should work. And uh, <coughs> it's... it's <laughs> MVC and CMS. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if, how many of you work with MVC? Yes, that's a bit. Have you worked with CMS systems that is pure MVC? No. I mean, Umbago 5 is getting pure MVC. Um, uh, but as what I've been, s I mean, what I've seen of it so far is, yeah, if you want to do stuff in the backend console, you have to implement things in MVC. Um, uh, but like putting a form or putting a list of teasers or whatever. I mean, that's not, I mean, you do it in Razor and you can do that in, in C1 now. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. We, it's a, definitely a, a, a subject, subject for, uh, for discussion. And if people are really interested in it, we should have a discussion about it. Yeah. I mean, I've been working both with 
interessiert und about the sound personally, I wouldn't put too much effort into grave deceased folk. No. With Bracer coming out, I, I don't even write models anymore. If I got entity framework support T1, all I would be writing as a controller now and again to do some code behind stuff that I need to, you know, centralize somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also because of the way that Composite works with compilation and such, uh, Race is also superior from a productivity yeah. point of view. I've been talking about yeah. how heavy I am about Racer because when we built Couture then we came into a situation, we had built Couture then heavily on MVC and uh, every time we were making a change to the final production code, we were spending maybe about a minute's time recompiling the uh, combo site because the file system was you would pick up a change to the file and then it was that and so on. And I, you know, from that perspective, I think race would be superior. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, the common misconception I, I see is that MVC is about Razor and uh, nice URLs. And both these things, I mean, yeah, you get it in MVC, but it doesn't mean that it's uh, MVC owns those things. I mean, we have nice URLs now in C1 and we have Razor in C1. So it's about unit testing, it's about maybe separation of concerns like controllers and models. Um, uh, but other than that, I see it as a good framework for maybe making your own apps, web apps, but I mean, here you have C1 is a content management system. But I also think that's, you know, that we put so much effort into the ABC patterns in the last three, four years. I know people that whose business are solely based on their ability to consult about ABC patterns in yeah. various uh, software scenarios. So obviously, you know, there's also some sort of, you know, religious aspect of course there is. I mean, MVC is very convention-based. You put your files in certain folders, you name them certain things, and, and all this. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so later on, yeah, there was a membership provider made, um, uh, some more URL support. And this is maybe the most important. In July 2011, I removed the nicer URL stuff from the contribution project because, yeah, Markus mentioned it, it came in 3.0, um, but before that there was a lot of beta releases, I guess we could call it at like 2.3 and, and so on. So actually it was already implemented in C1 back in summer last year. Um, uh, so that's, I mean, example of, um, uh, of how we can affect, yeah, next. <coughs> And those things Mark mentioned as well, so I don't want to, yeah, just skip it. This one is cool. Mm -hmm. This is actually the first external commit I got to the contribution project. I mean, this is the first commit that is not made by me. It is on Codeplex. Everyone can fork it. Everyone can make pull requests and, and put code back. Um, uh, and this one is made by Nils, who sits down there. Um, uh, so thank you for that. That was made in January, <coughs> a few days ago. But really, if you have, I mean, this code is, many of the things is of course, yeah, it's nice to have features inside the console, you can do things, um, uh, but it's also maybe, it's packages so you can see how different concepts work. How do you attach actions to the elements inside the tree? Um, there's, there's a few tutorials. Um, uh, on the community website of C1. But here you actually have working code. You can see how it's done. Um, uh, how do you extend certain things in the console? How do you, like the favorites package, I mean, yeah, it's maybe not that usable, but at least you can see some code how you would do it. <clears throat> so, so what's next? Um, I don't know. Depends on, I mean, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I'm a developer, like hardcore, all that stuff that Mark's been talking about in the 4.0 with it should be easier for the editors, it should be easier to host stuff, it should be easier to like starter sites and all that. I don't give a shit. Um, uh, but so, and that's why I think it's nice that you're able to have this contribution project where maybe you concentrate on more hardcore stuff. Um, uh, that you're maybe missing from the console. It's maybe the console stuff, all this. Yeah, there's this master pages, um, uh, but the rest is purely console stuff. 
things that make it easier for developers, you developers inside the console to do things. <coughs> so uh, it's all about, I mean, many of the things also come out of people maybe asking on Coplex, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? Why is this feature missing? And then I'm like, yeah, why is it missing? And then you spend maybe a few hours making a package for it. Um, uh, I don't know, that was the last question, I guess, was how do we download a folder with images from the media archive? Do I really have to like right click on every single image? And actually you had, so now you have a package so you can download, a right click on a folder and say download, and then you get a zip file with all the folders and medias in that folder. Um, uh, so, so what's next is all about what people will ask on Coplex, I guess. Um, yeah. If you put this, I, I was one day I was trying to explain on the side to a client <coughs> and uh, trying to make a presentation about it. I found this really excellent article on the code project that you and Marcus has actually co-authored about, you know, the architecture of the site. Yeah. I, I think that was really one of the best explanations that I've read about you know, the overall sort of stack overflow uh, question. Yeah, yeah it might actually be stack overflow. Yeah, there's one on stack overflow. Yeah, but it's on Coplex as well. Uh, I'm not. I don't think so. Consider maybe putting it in there so yeah. it does have a mm -mm. pretty good like, article about it. Yeah. 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 Ye
Have any of you tried the favorites package? Um, uh, so that's about when you go into functions, we have this all functions perspective. This will populate with everything. I mean, you have, the, this is how functions are implemented, like XSLT or whatever, but this is just everything that Composite knows about. And here you're able to just right click on a function and say add to favorites and it will pop up in this folder here. And why is that useful? useful? This is useful because with the permissions, I said editors are not able to see anything except the favorites folder. So if I go into a console where an editor has logged in and I say insert function, all I would see is the favorites folder. But what's inside it is actually real functions. So if I go back and say the my editor should be able to uh, have this function as well. I would say add to favorites, name it quick. When I go back here, hopefully, this is a demo. <laughs> it will show up here. Um, uh, so it's a nice way of yeah, giving uh, access for only a few functions without having to care about which folders and and whatever they are in. <clears throat> this is, uh, was an interesting project to make because when I ma made it, when you insert the news function, this is actually a, a real function that is named underscore favorites dot news. Um, uh, so you would expect when you insert it that you will get a green box pointing to this underscore functions dot news. But when I inserted it, you see it's the actual name that the function points to. Um, uh, and that's some low-level proxy stuff. Um, uh, but it's with being able to do this, I'm actually able to, to replace the green box with my own image as well if I wanted to. Um, and I hear there's some requests for that. So, uh, so yeah, maybe you'll see it up next week or something. No, maybe not next week, I'm going on skiing, but maybe the week after. <clears throat> yeah? Yeah, that's the, I mean, if you say source code. You can write the source code, you write the function call using XML, <coughs> you will get it. Of course, you can always. The tree structures, navigating the tree structures uh, will permit it, and you will not be able to go and edit or delete and so on. <laughs> okay. but, uh, <laughs> but you don't like pass the markup and, and prevent you from doing stuff. Imagine, for instance, you don't have access to a function but you edit a page with that, which has the function already in it, yeah, uh, we would then have to like punish you somehow or like to edit the page. So we don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you, if, if you know the name of the function, sure, or if you copy it for somewhere else, of course you can always insert it. This is the trees, um, uh, the trees that just show up. And here, of course, you are able to edit the actual function, even though I was not, I couldn't find it in the tree. But if you right-click on it, I say edit, then everything works ex as expected. <coughs> And uh, see what else was cool to show off. <laughs> see, so what else do I have here? <laughs> yeah, so the sorting is uh, is a concept of how many of you are like would say you are core, hardcore developers. Like, have you, have any of you tried to write like static types instead of creating? dynamic types in C1. Do you know what the difference is? <clears throat> yeah, good. So basically when you have the, the data perspective here and you create types, they're compiled. C1 is generating interfaces for it. Um, uh, actually code interface that you co can code up against. Um, um, as a developer, we have concepts like uh, inheritance and implement, I mean you can if you have many types that has many of the same fields on them, you know it's good practice to maybe make some super interfaces that has those fields and then every type will just implement that. 
so you don't have to re-implement the same fields over and over and over again. Um, uh, other CMSs like Sidecore and Braco has this concept. You can create one type and then other types then inherit from and then just they get all the fields automatically. So C1, inside its stomach, um, uh, supports this and uses it for many of the things. But the UI doesn't really have any concept of it. You can't say, okay, I have this type, and now I want to create a type underneath it that takes all the fields from it and, and has them already. Um, uh, but since it supports it, we just have to make some <coughs> extra UI stuff for it. So uh, <clears throat> one thing that's often requested on Coplex is how do I sort my data elements. I have maybe, uh, let's say, I have this page here and I have uh, some page folder elements and I want these to be shown in a certain order on my web page. How do I do that? Well, you can't. Um, not out of the box anyway. So what is often um, uh, suggested on Coplex is, okay, create a new field that is called maybe sort order and let the user enter a, a number from one to 10 or a thousand or whatever, um, which is not really elegant. <clears throat> um, so what I did was I created a new interface called sortable, which has only one field called sort order, which has the number on it. And what you can do is I can right click on a field here, now on a data type for instance, and then I get a new option called enable sorting. And all this does is basically take my data type and, and put it in a hierarchy where generic sort is above it, so I get the field from my sort interface on this data type. And then I created a package that recognizes this. Um, uh, So it recognizes that, okay, this data type has this interface on it, and then I can choose sort. And when I click that, I get my items, and then I can just drag them up and down. Now, this is a request for the core team, because nothing happens over here. Um, uh, but yeah. You persist it and send a refresh. <laughs> There's nothing happens. You are not able to s sort the stuff over here by some arbitrary field of your own choosing. <laughs> um, uh, so, but what this does is when you create maybe your XSLT, then you have this new field, you can <coughs> sort by it. Or if you have your razor, then you have this new field when you make your link query, you can sort by it. It's just, it's, it's just there. If you have a if you use um, uh, SQL, the column sort is just created on the table. So, <clears throat> and another f cool thing about this package is uh, drag and drop sorting for, uh, for pages. So when I right click on a page, it will recognize, yeah, there are sub pages. If I drag and drop and say news should be in the top, it will just do it and refreshes the tree right away. So many of you have maybe this cut and paste hell. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so no more of that. <clears throat> Would it be possible to make the drag drop in the tree? Mm. Or call change then? Okay. That would be all, all the stuff you're seeing is stuff you can do without blocking. Modifying is also what you want. But using ex extensibility points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a clean install uh, that doesn't modify the call. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course we can do that, but we would need to do it in the call. Yeah. In defense of C1, um, uh, this is the way you sort pages in Umbraco. You right click, choose sort, you get a new pop-up, and then you drag and drop, and when you're satisfied, you press OK. So this is the same. <clears throat> um, uh, so, what, yeah. And actually, change history is the same. Um, if you wanted to track change state, that has been on Coplex as well. Pages, you have a change state field 
So every time you save and update a page, this timestamp is getting updated. Um, and there's also a change by which user did it in the console. Um, uh, so what we can do on, uh, on data, uh, our own data types is also enable history, which basically does the same. It takes the interface that is there already, puts it on our data type, and then when C1 saves data, it recognizes, oh, it has this interface on it, update the timestamp. Um, so actually you would also be able to look into that and uh, do some history also with the content. Mm. Uh, or you already have a package for that one? Yeah. Like content versioning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is all done by uh, hooking in like uh, extra commands on the context menu. Here, I dis I recognize yeah my type already has the sorting interface, so I can remove it again. If you do that, um, all the existing data is removed down in the SQL database or XML files, and we go back in here. Um, uh, you see, there's no sorting anymore. <clears throat> also, if, yeah. So the cool thing now, which I just created yesterday, um, uh, is instead of having, I mean, this can be fairly long if you have maybe a thousand, hundred different interfaces that you would able to, to inherit from, then you will have a checkbox for each of them in this context menu. Um, so what we're able to do now this is a core change in the source, is when you edit a data type, I created a new tab over here. We call it mix-ins. I would have called it umbraco. That's an internal joke because <laughs> I was at the, the umbraco talk Tuesday night. Were any of you there? Um, uh, they have the same concept, but they call it composite data types. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah. Um, uh, but here, basically, what we're doing on this tab is we're going into the system, we are recognizing all the interfaces that you have defined as static interfaces. And we're giving the developer the opportunity to say, I want to inherit from this and this and this and this. So basically, now we don't, this context menu is irrelevant now because this is doing exactly the same. I'm clicking here. I have this interface called iGeneric Sortable. When I choose it and say save, dun, dun, dun. this is update automatics. So basically, it does the same. It puts the interface on. When you go on to content, refresh this. We have the sort now. Mm -mm. So, uh, and you can just remove it again. <coughs> this is a fairly, I think this, probably you just did this. Uh, how, how many hours did it take you to get inheritance? Well, inheritance was made long time ago. Um, uh, so this was easy to make because I have been thinking about it for maybe half a year. Um, uh, so this took two hours to make. <coughs> But it's, yes, it's a super interesting concept that we will be exploring. Uh, in, in, uh, it's like also, I guess, the concept of, of having something like a product, which would have basic values like a title and a price, and then you could speci uh, make specializations of different kinds, or it could be a teaser and different specializations and so on. <coughs> um, so there's that's a lot of opportunity in there. But this is a <laughs> so yeah. Questions? Well, it's uh, just a comment because. Uh, in talking to Marcus a few times, he mentioned the fact that I think we should have like a, and this would have to be a contributed project because we did a lot of work, we have like an entity framework provider because a lot of the things that I see you doing right there, I do with native entity framework applications. Like I'll make my model, then I'll make my partial class, and I'll put my whatever interface I need onto that and implement mm -hmm. my methods. So, you know, if we could make like an, an editor, because here is is fundamentally XML. So we could actually pass a lot of it into the actual browser of the console. 
we would be able to do a lot of these things without having to build our own system for it just by leveraging the technology that's already there. Yeah. So when you do your entity models, do you create iData interfaces that C1 recognizes? No. no. I, just, I could just add, annotate my models with the iData interface, uh, mm. but no, I don't do that when mm. Because I guess one requirement of getting data into the C1 console, maybe the trees and all this, is that it's iData, right? Uh, yeah, well, it, that, it, it, by doing that, it would be omnipresent, this data, in, in, yeah. anywhere. Of course, you can it's just because one of the big well. issues I also have is it's, it's sometimes difficult for me to pull data out of CompuSide. Mm. I, I could do it in many ways. I can use this old data, whatever, or I even wrote my own uh, CSV parser that takes any graph of objects and finds all the I data stops all in the graph and flattens it out. And that gave some funny side effects <laughs> and tells people about it another time. But, but the bottom line is that I think, you know, it would create a really good synergy and it would sort of let you have your model. When I, the first time I saw Composite, I remember you talking about how you were writing your own sort of uh, model layer for an app you were doing to something mm. outside Composite. You had your own model and then you were integrating it into yeah. Composite. And, and you know, that is actually not a bad idea because many people, they have, you know, existing projects with existing models that have been implemented. So if you mm. could, you know, pull the EF framework down over that and have the snap and then you get, a, you know, a lot of benefits and you don't end up having, you know, uh, you can both do the make sense model, but you can also do the pure code model where you mm. just define some extra classes and then you compile it to everything and you pretty much whatever you want. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, definitely. I mean, this is created because you always be able to. You have always been able to do this if you create static types yourself. You can always create an interface that will implements whatever you want. This is pure UI stuff for maybe making it more accessible for casual developers who like to just do stuff in, in dynamic data types. <coughs> yeah. If you already have uh, this package, uh, would it be hard to, or difficult to do it with the dynamic data types so you would be able to say this type needs this base type? Um, actually, I, I thought it was easy to do and I did it at first. Every dynamic data type showed up here as well and I could say this one should have the fields from this one. Um, uh, but then some funny parts, funny things started showing up. And some of the things that you probably don't, haven't realized, but it just happens, is that when you create a data type, there's, you, you won't, if you go over to the fields, if you, okay. yeah, just take maybe this one and, uh, and go to the fields. <coughs> one of the global data types. <coughs> And say edit. And you take fields. You see there's no ID field here. But actually when you look at the data type it, the interface, there is an ID. So that's some stuff Composite does behind the scene. Um, you're not able to create, if you create a field here named ID, you get an error saying you can't do that. Um, uh, the, the ID field is always created and it has a, a type of GUID. And that means that if I want to have this interface inheriting from this, you would have two interfaces both having the same ID field. And then you have a name clash and, 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 and just an error appears. So what we should be able to do is basically have data types, be able to create a data type that doesn't have this ID field. Basically, you can create instances of it. Um, so it's, it's, it's a more uh, simple data type that you can create instances of, but you can use it for make sense. Um, but that's something that has to be done in the core. <coughs> no. If you do your own data types, you can choose whatever keys and so on you want to. It's only in the GUI, the wizard stuff you do it. If the ID would work on the ID, it wouldn't be a problem because you could just change the ID. Yeah, then you have multiple characters. Interface implementation of it. <laughs> uh, or you could do an identity interface 
that has the ID field. Yeah, the ID should the ID shouldn't be on the ID data itself because then you would have a problem with, for instance, this I generic sortable interface. It shouldn't have an ID because I mean it's just put on some something else that has the ID. Um, so that should be some yeah an interface with an ID that you can implement, for instance. It's very easy to fix. So. <laughs> Um, <coughs> yeah. So this was some of yeah some of the things that I made been doing in the contribution project. Most of it for fun because I could, um, uh, and someone else could maybe um, uh, make good use of it. <coughs> so yeah, this is enough for this talk. I would have another talk later. Um, showing some web form stuff.